Hello, friends. Welcome to Storytime with Sai. Goldilocks and the Three Dinosaurs, as we told by Mo Willems. Once upon a time, there was three. There were three dinosaurs: Papa Dinosaur, Mama Dinosaur, and some other dinosaur who happened to be visiting from Norway. For no particular reason, the three dinosaurs made up their beds, polished their chairs just so, and cooked their. Three bowls of delicious chocolate pudding at varying temperatures. Oh boy," said Papa Dinosaur in his loud, booming voice. "It's finally time to leave and go to the uh someplace else." Yes," continued Mama Dinosaur. I sure hope no innocent little succulent child happens by our unlocked home while we are uh someplace else. <laughs> Then the other dinosaur made a l- loud noise that sounded like a big evil laugh, but was probably just a polite Norwegian expression. Hey, hey! Hug your first. Hug your eggs and chest. The three dinosaurs went to went someplace else, and were definitely not hiding in the woods, waiting for an unexpected child to come by. Sure enough, five minutes later, a poorly supervised little girl named Goldilocks came tra. Trapsing along. Just then, the forest boomed with the with what could have been a dinosaur yelling. Gotcha! But I'm pretty pretty sure it was just the wind. The loud noise was immediately followed by another loud noise that sounded kind of like, "Be patient, Papa Dinosaur." Trap is not yet str- sprung, but it could have been a rock falling or a squirrel. Getting closer. Either way, Goldilocks is not the, uh, the type of little girl who listen to anyone or anything. For example. Goldilocks never listened to warnings about the dangers of bar- barging into strange, enormous houses. Welcome, tee hee. So as soon as Goldilocks came across a strange, enormous house, she barged right in. Inside. Goldilocks immediately smelled the three bowls of delicious chocolate pudding. Mmm," said Goldilocks. "That chocolate pudding smells delicious. If only I could get all the way up to the top of that counter." Then Goldilocks noticed a very tall ladder that just happened to be there and certainly wasn't left on purpose. Goldilocks climbed up the ladder and found herself face to face with three gigantic bowls of chocolate pudding. The first bowl of chocolate pudding was too hot, but Goldilocks ate it all anyway because, hey, it's chocolate pudding, right? The second bowl of chocolate pudding was too cold. But who cares about the temperature when you've got a big bowl of chocolate pudding? Not her. The third bowl of chocolate pudding was just right, but Goldilocks was such a roll by now she hardly noticed. Soon Goldilocks was stuffed like one of those delicious chocolate-filled little girl bonbons, which, by the way, are not 
totally are totally not the favorite things in the world for hungry dinosaurs. Tired and groggy, Goldilocks noticed three chairs in the living room. So she climbed down the ladder and walked out of the kitchen. The first chair was too tall. The second chair was too tall, but the third chair was too tall. Goldilocks wasn't going to climb that high just to sit in some chair, so she hiked over to the bedroom. When she got there, Goldilocks noticed that the beds were also gigantically big. What is going on around here? Groaned the exhausted girl. The bears that live here must be nuts. Just then, the room filled with loud, booming noises that were either a passing truck or a dinosaur gloating. A few more minutes, then she'll be asleep. Delicious chocolate-filled little girl bonbons are yummier when they're rested. Even a little girl who never listens to anyone or anything had to hear that. Goldilocks took a minute to stop and think, which was longer than she was used to stopping and thinking. Hey, she told herself, "This isn't some bear's house. This is dinosaur. This is some dinosaur's house." Say what you. Like about Goldilocks, but she was no fool. As quickly as she could, she ran to the back door and got out of there. Just then, a loud, just then, a loud plane flew by, which sound, which sounded pretty much like a trio of dinosaurs yelling, "No!" or "Charge!" Or the Norwegian expression for "chewy bonbon time." Suddenly, and completely coincidentally, the three dinosaurs rushed through the front door, but they were too late. Goldilocks was gone, and all that was left in there in the house was three disappointed dinosaurs. The end. And the moral is: if you ever find yourself in the wrong story, leave. And the moral for the dinosaurs is: lock the back door. The end. What is your favorite part of the story? My favorite part of the story is where Goldilocks ate. Three gigantic bowl of bowls of chocolate pudding. This book is I am not a chair. On Giraffe's first day in the jungle, he felt something wasn't right. Can I share that chair? Chair? I am not a chair. Giraffe knew he needed to clear things up right away. But what? He couldn't get the words out. I'm a giraffe. Can't they see? I have spots and ears and eyes. And whatever these things are, if they could see the difference, giraffe would have to show them. Snap, twist, twist, clang, clang. Now that's a chair. Looks nothing like me. New friends were already. New friends were already headed this way. Problem solved. Whoop! Wobble! 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 Smash! Oh no! My chair! I'll fix it. Snip!
this, this. This goes here. That goes there. Giraffe's first day could not get any worse. But at least no one could sit on him now. Plop, plop, plop. A giraffe looked for a solution. Someone was spying on him. A human! Surely he'll know who I am. Look at those spots. It's perfect. Ah. Quick. Smartest species. Yeah, right. Enough. I am not a chair. And I'm speaking up to the next animal I see. Roar! The next animal I see will be my dinner. Even if I have to sit here all night. Giraffe wished he could run. He wished he could hide. He wished he wasn't so afraid. No, I need to speak up. I need to be me. And Giraffe couldn't hold any longer. I've got to pee. Okay, here goes nothing. Gulp. Excuse me. Ah, run for your life. A talking chair. I am not a chair. I'm a giraffe. And the next day, he told everyone. And everything felt right. Me? A chair? Can you believe it? The end. What is your favorite part of the story? My favorite part of the story is where the lion got scared because it's a talking chair. And giraffe is sitting on a turtle. I'm going to read you a book called Fiona is Bedtime by Richard Cordy. Tweet, 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 coo, 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 howl, howl, roar, hoot, hoot, gobble, gobble, grr, squawk, squawk, howl, roar, squawk, coo. The sun is setting in at the zoo. The critters had a busy day filled with laughter, fun, and play. But now it's bedtime at the zoo. It's bedtime for Fiona too. Before today's adventure ends, she'll say good night to all her friends. Good night, koalas. Time to doze. With your paws, with your paws, curl up near your nose. Safe and happy in the trees, snoozing in the evening breeze. Good night, cheetah. Lightning fast. Now it's time to sleep at last. Snuggle up in Mama's fur and drift off to her loving purr. Good night, tortoise. Where's your head? Oh, tucked inside your shell-shaped bed. It's warm and snug, so settle in and let your reptile dreams begin. Good night, slot. To bed you go, moving very, very slow. Sleepy eyes and big slotty yawn. Sweet dreams till the break of dawn. Good night, flamingos, on your toes. You sleep in such a silly pose. Please make a promise that you'll keep. Don't fall down while you're asleep. Good night, otters, in a row, hand in hand and toe to toe. Drift to sleep, rock and sway. Together, you won't float away. Good night, meerkats, in a heap. It's time for you to go to sleep. Cuddled up and all piled high. Now, 
Dream beneath the starry sky. Good night, giraffes, as tall as trees. Time to bend your knobby knees. It's a long way to the ground. Now rest your heads and settle down. Good night, tigers. Build a tribe. You curl up in the grass and hide. It's time to let out one last roar, and then a grumbly, growly snore. Good night, bear cubs. White as snow, off to dreamland you will go. Stretch your legs, your back, your claws. Rest your head upon your paw. Rest your heads upon your paws. Good, Good night, wolf. And sleepy pack. Good night, apes on Mama's back. Good night, wild beast and goo. Good night, huddled penguins too. Good night, lizard. No more creeping. Good night, zebra. Standing sleeping. Good night, lion. Mane so sleek. Good night, chicken. Rest your feet. Yawn, snore, sigh, coo. Yawn, snore, sigh, coo coo. The moon shines down upon the zoo. All good nights have now been said. Fiona, time to go to bed. The end. What is your favorite part of the story? My favorite part of the story is where Fiona says. Good night, you can rest your beat.